Are you thinking about buying or selling a home or just want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwell and welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Today is going to be a fun topic. I have uh, Corey Colburn, Structure Tech, back again. Thank you for joining us today. Talking about kind of like issues that come up depending on the age of a home. we got a lot to roll through here. I think we have yeah. uh, 13, 13 different items we're going to get to um, as to things you want to be aware of as a buyer, maybe as a seller out there. And this is something, too, to consider as a seller, especially in a faster-moving market, that maybe doing a pre-inspection is a good idea. I know this is something you guys offer at Structure Tech. That's right. Um, and if somebody wanted to set up something like that, and the reason for doing this is, you know, as a seller, it's, it's very competitive out there, but some buyers really still want to be able to see that home inspection and aren't going to feel comfortable without seeing one. And some other buyers are just waving it, which is not really a great idea on a single family house with all the different systems that are there. Um, so to be able to present and have one ready for all buyers to be on a, a level playing field mm -hmm. is a good idea. If somebody wanted to set one of those up as a seller, uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you and or your company? Right. Uh, we're Structure Tech, structuretech.com. You can set something up there. Otherwise, call our office, 952-915-6466. Uh, uh, that would be the best way. They, they, our office staff will get everything set up, reach out to agents or, or uh uh, well, I guess yeah, it's sellers, a, it's yeah. a, it's yep. the seller and get, get everything set up. So, yep. Yeah. All right. So diving into this, um, talking about uh, kind of some of the things that we see, and, and not all of these are referenced here, but kind of a way to, to, to get yourself in a good mindset is to go back. We have our smart home buyer, our smart seller guides, yeah. Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Uh, dot com. You can grab those there um, to get yourself ready for kind of what are some of the things you may see in an, in an inspection. We're going to kind of dive in deep into that, though, today. I bet you've seen a lot, Corey. <laughs> we have. Yep. Our whole team has seen uh, quite a bit. I, well, I love some of the, the pictures uh, that we, you know, I know Ruben has the red flags list that he, he has up the blog and stuff like that. I mean, I can just imagine, you know, I go through about 400 homes a year. I think you're kind of similar range for uh, inspections. Yeah, about 300. Yeah. And that's uh, typically through the, the busy season of March through November-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, a lot of homes. And you're, you're, spending, you're spending, you know, three, hours. four hours in a house, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and where I'm there for 15 minutes, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you're digging up some... some uh, good issues, uh, good learning, and that's one of my favorite things about uh, this job is is you know all these houses you always see something different. Yeah. And we're right? we're taking uh, two to two hundred and fifty pictures per uh, location, and giving a solid thick yeah. report back <laughs> yeah. too, which is very helpful as an agent to go through that with clients. Right. Well, let's start out with one. I know I've talked to you a million times, Corey, about this, which we we come across here in the Twin Cities. And that's ungrounded outlets. Right. Uh, up until about the 1960s, you would see typically two prong outlets in, yep. in homes. Um, obviously, it's been since updated, adding that third prong or the, the ground. Um, it, seeing a two prong outlet uh, doesn't mean that it's bad, uh, it's just not up to today's code. Yeah, I see a lot, a lot of buyers, you know, depending on their inspector, they freak out. Oh, my gosh, it's yeah. an ungrounded outlet. And I think, I mean, there's a safe ungrounded outlet and a not-so-safe ungrounded outlet, right? Right. Uh, the, 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 you know, today's standards, like I said, that, that third prong really is for uh, your electrical equipment. Yep. So I would say your, safety for your, your yeah. electrical equipment. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Well, and the ones that I come across where it's like, hey, this, this could be a problem is where you have handyman seller who has put a three-prong in place oh, yeah. of the two-prong, right? Ungrounded three-prong. Ungrounded three-prong. Right. I see that all the time where every, every outlet in the room will be two-prong, but then there'll be one 
It's like, I'm guessing that one's not it. And usually it turns out to be an ungrounded. And that one. is an actual hazard, right? Yeah. right. When, well, when we, it's that way. With blue kids, you don't know that it's actually an ungrounded right. uh, outlet. But we do, we test, we have we have all the testers and we test all the outlets in the houses and they'll let us know. They're well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And like I said, we got a ton we're going to dive into here. Again, you can check out all of our past shows at Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Dot com, and we'll be back in just a second with Corey with Structure Tech. Our local sponsors are Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preeby with Bell Bank Mortgage, Structure Tech Home Inspections, James Tufson with Country Financial, along with Cregan's Construction and Grey Duck Staging and Design. Hi, I'm Ruben with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Everyone knows you should have a home inspection before you buy a home, but we've heard of home buyers being encouraged to skip the home inspection in this crazy market to make their purchase offer more attractive. Now they're facing tens of thousands of dollars in unexpected repairs. I'm telling you now, don't skip the home inspection. Here at Structure Tech, we can get your home inspected quickly and we offer a full line of services. Visit us online at structuretech.com to learn more. Don't fall for the billboards or the clickbait. There is no such thing as today's rate. Mortgages and mortgage rates are individual to you. Chad Preby and Eric Bloomstrand with Bell Bank Mortgage are here to show you the formula to get your best rate. Once you know this formula, you can mortgage shop with confidence. Find us online at chadpreby.com. That is chadpreby.com, NMLS 1462493, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Kurt Duckwall with Bricks Real Estate and the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Buying or selling a home is one of the biggest financial transactions people make. Before you make your next move, download our free smart home buyer or smart seller guides to give you the edge in our real estate market. From deal hunting to knowing the right repairs for maximizing value, these free guides have it all. Check them out and more at BricksTwinCities.com under publications. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Again, if you have any real estate questions, you can submit those online at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com or if you're looking for any help with buying or selling a home, you can reach out anytime as well through the website or just give us a call directly, 651-303-0019. Today, talking about some common issues uh, that we see with homes depending on the age. And we had kind of left off with... Um, ungrounded outlets and super common all the way up till the early 60s and during the break you had mentioned um, ungrounded in bathrooms right yes uh, that, that's a particularly dangerous area for an ungrounded outlet uh, number one because it can't be GFCI protected right uh, any outlets near water unfinished areas uh, garages exterior those should all have, uh, they should all be GFCI outlets. And, and that doesn't mean that they necessarily have to have the push, to, you know, those are the ones with the, the test reset yep. button, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes they can be, that test reset button can be down the line. So not every single GFCI outlet has that. Okay. So they can run in a circuit? Right, right. Yep. Well, and I, now they have what, GFCI protected breakers, right? Protected breakers. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, but I uh, kind of, I know I got off path there, but kind of circling around, um, yeah, it, it also in bathrooms, one of the other things that we, we check out too is to see if the uh, light fixture is grounded. And same uh, concept of an ungrounded outlet, um, you know, that can become a hazardous situation mm -hmm. uh, around water. Yeah. So. All right. So kind of moving on, this is something else that, oh, I mean, especially in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and first ring suburbs, um, into the second ring suburbs, the, the, the good old nine by nine tiles, right? right. This yeah. is something we see a lot of. In, yeah. in basements, basements, under a lot of flooring. Mm -hmm. Attic spaces sometimes, <laughs> old kitchens. closets, yeah. old kitchens, yep. yeah. So those, the, the, that specific size tile is, is most likely to contain asbestos. Now that right. We're never really going to know that unless we take a sample and send it in and have it tested. But uh, we typically would call that out in a report. And along with the 9x9 nine nine tiles uh, would be, would be um, insulation around boiler lines, um, it, uh, sometimes duct work. Oh, like the uh, asbestos wrap. wrap. Mm -hmm. Asbestos yes, wrap. Yes. I'm kind of mm -hmm. talking about a couple it other asbestos things. It was used as insulation, essentially, right? In yep. that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, vermiculite insulation can also contain asbestos. Yeah, so I this is I had a 1914 uh, house and yeah, a good old vermiculite up there. And can you describe what that is if somebody wants to like know if they might have it? Yeah, I, for me, I I, I kind of call it fool's gold. Yes. Does that make sense? That the texture of it is kind of. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not a little shiny like a yep. rock, but yep. it's shiny. It's a little bit gold, a little bit gray. It kind of has little, like little chunks, pebbles, little right? Little chunks, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, very distinct. You, if you, if It'll you stick it, to everything if you go up, right, if you're up in the attic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try not to crawl uh, mm -hmm. through the, <laughs> the vermiculite. But. I've seen that a lot in balloon-framed houses. Well, they just dumped it down sure. into the, to, in between the joists, essentially. And what surprised me here with both the um, 9 by 9 tiles and the vermiculite is that this goes all the way up for the 9 by 9s uh, into the 1980s that you're right. saying, or 1980. Yep. Um, and then the vermiculite into the 90s, I would have never guessed it went that long. Yeah. And yeah. we still see a vermiculite type material in, uh, in some of the, the gas fireplaces. Oh. Yes, I've seen that. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, outside of uh, vermiculite, moving on to kind of circling back to our first segment, electrical, right? Sure. And this is one I know we talked about a bit on a previous show, but it's knob and tube wiring, um, common up into the 1940s. And I, I think the misconception, I, I see a lot of people, they'll, you know, they'll see the, the black uh, cloth wrapped with the paper in these inside, and as soon as they see the black, they just say knob and tube, but that's not really what knob and tube is. Right. right. You're referring that to cloth to wire. Right. Yep. yep. Uh, knob and tube typically would have actual knobs and tubes. Um, it's the oldest wiring. The glass that, little tubes yep. as they run along mm -hmm. through the attic. Yep. Uh, it's the oldest wiring that's available. Uh, when it, it becomes more of a concern is if it's uh, buried in insulation uh, it, 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 because it can't, um, dissipate heat uh, as well as it, it should. And again, that's going to be ungrounded. Right. Well. Yep. One, I think, I mean, more apt to fire issues, like with um, uh, pests, maybe, squirrels. Yep. If gnawing they, on them. They're chewing it up mm -hmm. in the attic. Yep. Yes. Right. <laughs> Mice love living in attics, especially in that vermiculite, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> making their nests. You know, they do so, the tunneling. Yeah, yes. That's an issue up in the attics for sure. Well, and I know we had this, this is kind of under um, uh, more common any any home, but cause, sir, you mentioned the, the mice, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't disappear with any time frame, but that is something that, like, I, I joke about water in basements. There's two types of basements in Minnesota, those that, <laughs> those that have had water and those that will, well, <laughs> right? Um, we're a wet state. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, and it's, it's not always water from the outside. It can be condensation that can build up. It can be a leaky wash tub, water heater, uh, pipe that breaks. There's so many ways that a house can get water. But same kind of thing with pests, right? That it is a common thing, but it can be mitigated. Absolutely. Uh, pests, are, pests exist around us because the environment uh, allows for them to habitate their food, water, harborage. Uh, typically with mice, exclusion is the best way to uh, not, well, not let them get into your house in the first place, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, you know, obviously, well, keep them out. Um, sealing up the holes. Sealing up holes. Mm -hmm. uh, different methods, depending on what type of uh, infestation it may be, may or may not be, you know, poison or traps. Obviously, with poison, you have a, a possibility of an animal, you know, passing inside the house, but. So another one, this is. Pretty common that I see out there, um, especially in you know Minneapolis, St. Paul, the cities themselves, is the galvanized lines, uh, whether that's a water line or a drain line, all the way up until the 60s, which, which threw me off a little bit. You know, I thought that was something that ended more like around the, the late 40s or yeah. something. Yeah, 60s-ish. Yeah, we, that's that's the typical time frame where we see that not as often after after that time frame, but. Uh, the galvanized water supply can corrode on the inside of the pipe and restrict water flow. So whenever, you know, we have houses, we we're looking at houses of this era, we'll always run a couple of water sources at the same time to see what the water flow is like. Yeah, yeah. I know, especially your, your second level bathroom on right. those houses. Yep. I, 
Um, have you heard about this new, like, boring technology they have for galvanized lines to clear out the corrosion? That would be oh, new to me. Really? Yeah, yeah. Came across it. It's just kind of cool. Oh, interesting. Does that make so, sense to spend that? Or? I don't know. I haven't, lo I haven't looked look into it outside up. of see see seeing it, uh, and I was just like, oh, that's kind of neat, but haven't yeah. circled back around. Sure. Um, all right, kind of back, back j jumping around, but we're moving along in time here. Um, the uh, Federal uh, Pacific Stab Lock Panels. This is, I mean, you get out to your uh, second and third ring suburbs, you find these all over the place, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. and what is the hazard with these, these electrical panels? Loose breakers. Okay. The, a loose breaker, loose connection means arcing, means fire. So... Uh, we don't actually open these panels when we see them at a house. Uh, obviously, I, we would suggest, have, our suggestion is to have them replaced. The other part of that, though, is, you know, they've been there for, for decades, and obviously they haven't had an issue yet. Right. Um, but we do suggest the upgrade. Yeah, I, I know with uh, my home, uh, when I went to, to sell it, it was kind of one of those where I bought it knowing the history. Yeah. Not really caring that much, but understanding when it came time to sell, it's time to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, hired, hired an electrician and, and put in a new panel. Because, yeah, if you look up and just type in, you know, Federal uh, Pacific Panels, and you can see the, the issues there. It's kind of an interesting story. Yeah. Federal of, Pacific went bankrupt from all of their lawsuits from burning house to, houses down. Yep. They, don't, they don't flip when it, it's overheating, too. Mm -hmm. And I had a client, I don't know if you've had this experience, I had a client that we couldn't get it insured. After everything was said and done, could not find insurance for the panel. Interesting. And so we had to go back and renegotiate. And so ever since, that's something I'm dealing with outright in the offer. Well, in talking about fire hazards and electric, that kind of seems to be the theme here, fire hazards, <laughs> <laughs> electric. Um, aluminum wiring aluminum branch wiring can you kind of hit on you know what this is when it was and what is the the issue there what can what can happen sure so aluminum branch wire circuit wiring um it's it it was installed in the mid 60s to mid 70s and it's exactly that it's aluminum we saw a lot of aluminum around there. The aluminum framed windows, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the aluminum wiring expands and contracts more. And, and with that, again, back to creating a loose connection, which can create an arc, which, uh, uh, you know, you should, you should have that replaced, really. There are also things that you can do with aluminum wiring, uh, copolum connections, um, you know, to, to make a different connection at, at the breakers. So, um, okay, so that's a little bit new to me. So there's a way to actually go in and maybe mitigate without having to rip it all out? It, it, depending on the scenario, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That's kind of cool. Um, all right. So moving on, this is a big one that we hear a lot of horror stories about. I mean, I know I've actually had you make recommendations on some of these homes to have them tested, which is... The stucco houses um, and some of the, the uh, moisture that can build up. So how about a little time frame and, and history on, on this particular issue? Yeah, so uh, stucco houses, stucco applied in the mid-80s, you know, even up until now, if it wasn't installed properly, can have uh, moisture-related issues. Well, I think that's, that's a key point mid 80s on forward right so right. your 1930s homes your 1950s right right these are not the houses you know I, we were talking about you see problems a lot in minneapolis st paul with some of these other issues this is one where if it's a stucco home in that area it's probably just fine yeah. right yep. this is more now the suburban homes and and why is it that the moisture builds up well, on these uh, improper well, improper installation weep screeds missing at the bottom uh, you know, uh, not a gap around the windows that's caulked. Um, it, houses became tighter and tighter, you know, as modern mm -hmm. day uh, builds were happening. So uh, not getting that airflow um, behind the stucco or letting the house breathe was, was an issue. And that's why 
there was the addition of HRVs or, or ERVs or air exchange systems in, in newer homes. Right, that was the correction, right? To, to make it so the airflow inside the vapor barrier was happening. Where these old houses, I mean, you'd have the gaps, you yeah, know, in yeah. the boards, and it would just... It's a little more breezy. Yeah. It's a little more breezy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, and just really quick to jump in for stucco, you can do testing for that. Yeah, absolutely. You offer testing. We suggest testing um, for, for stucco um, from the mid-1980s and on. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and and it you can get some pretty significant, like, rot or mold build up, right? Yep. At Within the sheathing, those? At the sheathing behind the, the stucco layers, yes. And not cheap either to fix. Right. No, there have yeah. been cities, we were talking about this earlier, there have been cities in our metro that have banned stucco and new construction because of how horrible issues have been with finding out improper installation led to the house rotting. Yeah, and I've heard about whole, whole developments yeah. where, I mean, it's just, you know, each mm -hmm. house had hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of repair that had to be done to them so so all know, their stucco probably good yeah. that was the most common sighting of that era stucco yep yeah. so i mean this stucco. is definitely something as <laughs> as as a buyer to, to be aware we're not saying that every house is this way right if you see that air to air exchanger that's a, a good sign but you know it's something you want to consider as as you're looking at these right um all right now this one <laughs> isn't really a set time frame, but it has come up more. I think it was like, what, 2014 radon testing kind of came into play? Yeah. Right? I, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, 4.0. Nobody like, cared up nobody until 2000, <laughs> right? It's like, hey, this is a thing now. <laughs> uh, 4.0 is the, the number that you need to know when it comes to radon. Uh, it can be in any house with any soil, with any condition, it, it's sure, if you really studied, you could find that it's, it's uh, more prevalent in some areas, but really uh, it can go house to house. One house could have higher radon levels. It depends on so many different factors. Um, well, and on this line, we got just a minute left before the segment, but uh, sewer issues, right? This has become a lot more common for people checking for as well and mm -hmm. can be, be an expensive one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Uh, a sewer, it, it just a, a round guess, sewer fixes can be up to $10,000. Yeah, or more. Or more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, just had a 15 grand one for a client. Wow. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, whole line from the house to the street if it's bad, you know. It, it's funny, I, I was talking with an agent, and just to put the bucket in the ground and start digging, you know, you're at like 2500 bucks, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I get, you got to dig up the city street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gets, <laughs> gets, gets spendy fast. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, I think we did a pretty good job of running through a lot of the main things depending on age of the home. Uh, when I, we come back, I want to kind of ask you, what is it that is your biggest, like, thing that you look for, like, if you were buying a home? We're going to take a quick commercial break again. TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. You can download all of our free publications there as well. For any questions, give us a call. We'll be right back. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction, and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com. My name is James Tobson with Country Financial. Anyone can sell you insurance, however, is it going to be the insurance you need? When life pops up with its surprises, you want the right coverage. When it comes time to find or renew your policy, give me a call. I would love to review your existing policy and show you what I can do for you. You can email me at james.tobson at countryfinancial.com or give me a call at 651-365-3408. Hi, I'm Becca, owner of Grey Duck Staging. With today's home buyers beginning their journey exclusively online, the look and feel of your home matters more than ever. Whether it's a simple in-home consultation, a refresh using your current furniture, or a whole home staging, our goal is always the same. Showing your home in the best light and helping you achieve the highest sales price possible. To learn more, visit us at greyduckstaging.com or check us out on Instagram at greyduckstaging. 
Welcome back to Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Any questions for us uh, after the show, you can always give them 651-303-0019. Again, thank you, Corey, for coming in today and talking about some of the, the bigger issues we see depending on how old a home is. All right, out of everything that you see, if you were out there buying a home, is there, is there one thing that kind of gives you the, the heebie-jeebies or whatever when you're, when you're looking? Right, so... Uh, I would say a lead, a lead water service line, and, and that's for me. I, everybody has a, uh, their own threshold. You don't um, like a little lead in your coffee in the morning? <laughs> Basically, uh, in St. Paul, and I, I haven't seen it outside of St. Paul. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Uh, it's in, in St. Paul until the mid 1920s. They're installing lead water service lines, yep. and it's it's typically. And that's uh, from the city to the house, right? Right. But they yeah. bend so easily; it's nice to work with, right? <laughs> yeah. You can just uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and those are and, and if if you're looking for that, it's it's uh, it typically would have a lead or a, or a bulb style fitting from yeah. the, near the water meter. And it, look, it looks it looks just like a bulb. Um, well, and, and it's not a cheap one to replace either. We're coming to the end here, but it, it's about what about 10, 12 grand or so to get that replaced. Dig, dig up the line to the street and replace it. Sure. Well, thank you so much again, thank everybody. You. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. People always ask realtors, "What is your commission?" But what they should be asking is, "What is your rate of return?" Commissions only vary by a couple of percent from agent to agent. However, the price per square foot you get just based on their experience and the quality of marketing they use can vary by 10% or more. At Bricks Real Estate, our agents use the right marketing and have the experience to get you top dollar for your house. See what we can do for you at BricksTwinCities.com. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com. You can catch us across all your devices, whether that's on TV, on the CW23, Saturday mornings at 6.30, or KSTC, Saturday mornings at 6, on the radio at AM 950, Sundays at noon, also on YouTube or Facebook by just typing in Twin Cities Real Estate Show, or you can also podcast us anytime, again, by typing in Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Don't forget to check us out online anytime at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. There you can find all of our past shows, our weekly market updates, along with the latest and greatest searching and researching tools and our free publications to include the Smart Home Buyer Guide and the Smart Seller Guide, along with the Bricks Report. All of these free for you. If you have any real estate questions, please feel free to give us a call, 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. Happy to help answer any of your real estate questions or assist with your real estate needs.